Today I return with another unscripted episode of Davo Talks where I discuss a certain topic. Now uh, today I was going to discuss inclusivity but after the Vox ad apocalypse I'm going to do something a bit more interesting and less political. I'm going to talk about the Epic um, Games platform because Tony Ninja wanted me to talk about that and the uh, digital trends of video games. Personally, the only other thing that can go digital at this point is movies. And for the primary point, like Netflix and Amazon Prime, they have, I think movies will still always have a um, hard copy, just out of necessity, because, well, you have pirating, because I think if we go too much to digital, people will just pirate the movies instead of getting digital copies. Some people like to have their collections. Books are primarily digital now due to a failing book industry. That's actually, that can go a lot more into politics because of the, but primarily the American education system. Um, and Australian education system is also pretty bad for it. Not really encouraging students to want to read. It's basically you have to read this thing instead of trying to find uh, books that students engage with to make get them into habits of reading. Um, so books will probably become digital just out of necessity of businesses going bankrupt. But there are businesses where if you're an independent author, you can request that they will print out books as they come in. So if an order comes in, they'll print out so many books and those books can't set out. They'll probably be the future of the uh publishing industry purely because the publishers at the moment are taking safe bets or they're just not getting the money they're used to because less and less people are reading books unfortunately um there's, there's a lot of important information to get through books that you can't get through the internet and a lot of great stories that inspire them from uh the imagination but other than that fans like the last thing to go digital because we've had the digitalization of tv and movies through things like netflix and amazon prime and whatever the fucking things are out there and books have become primarily digital for indie authors and a lot of mainstream authors are becoming digital just for things like Audible. Um, I think that's going to become more prevalent these days because the book industry, quite frankly, is dying. It's been dying for a pretty long time. Um, news, I think, will also go digital because a lot of it is dying. Um, that's what, it's the primary reason for the Vox Adpocalypse and for what I've seen. I won't go into that issue. Um, but it does seem like mainstream media is not getting the following it is. People aren't buying the papers like they used to. All their websites have gone into paid subscription models, which is a pain in the ass. As soon as you have like a major news hitting and they want you to pay five dollars for a month, like so I think it's like five dollars a week, so you can look at this newspaper article, which is complete fucking bullshit. And also, news can be delivered a lot better, more honest, and they have to show um, where they get information from with uh, digital media and they have to be honest because otherwise they'll get shut down because people will start watching them. Obviously we still have propaganda like Vox so it is possible to lie but the, I think the um, news and a lot of entertainment will go digital purely because it's far more accessible, accessible and there's no gatekeeping anymore which again goes back to the Vox issue of it seems like mainstream media is trying to go to back to gatekeeping which is the biggest issue we've had for many many years. The benefit of a podcast is that there's no one to stop you. Like maybe you don't have a microphone, you can't get over that um, just through saving, you can get over that um, bump in the road, but no one can stop you from making a good podcast and getting an audience. Um, I should stop leaving my desk, it's causing the mic to fuck up. But the bonus of that is anyone can have a podcast, gain an audience, and te- speak about their views. Obviously YouTube's trying to platform people, which is fucking terrifying, but the gatekeepers of old, like radio stations, are no longer there. And most people only listen to a radio station if they're like working in an office or they're, work, they're at work or they're in the car because it's completely apolitical. Everyone can listen to it and complain about it without any issues. It's only better for the radio these days. So, yeah, gaming's the last thing to go digital. That's primarily because gaming's had to use this so much. And, but it's, it's gotten more. And it's improved drastically. The affordability of hard drives has improved drastically. I don't think we'll have entirely just like Google Stadia because I don't think a majority of places have good enough internet for one. The other issues is lag and input and the fact you can't own your games. And I think we'll probably... There may be a massive... Either what will happen is there'll be a backlash to um, game going digital because of platforms... Like, uh, no, Twitter and Facebook, they'll ban you for no reason. What's to stop game companies or um, game platforms such as Sony and Xbox banning you from their platform and you've lost all those games you've spent thousands on? So I think there might be a backlash to di- um, digital. The bonus of physical is that um, 
you can keep that put on another console and you're fine um there's the steam issue there at steam's been pretty pro free speech and i don't think they've banned anyone uh, i could be wrong there i think steam primarily relies on the game to ban you rather than system 2 i think most games have been that way thankfully um but it's a matter of time there so okay let's, let's assume they don't go digital i think we'll still have at least collector's editions of digital games just as a necessity if everything does go digital and we do start having deplatforming of video games we will see a lot of pirate bay people will simply refuse to buy video games purely just like anime because anime is so fucking expensive a lot of people pirate it um thankfully we do have anime lab and Crunchyroll. it's probably how i watch anime um which you may see anime video on in the future i have been pretty uh, procrastinating procrastinating a lot about um analyzing writing which i originally planned on making this uh, youtube channel being about but i'm procrastinating a lot about that anyway back to digital market I, I think we'll see a lot of pirating if there is any kind of censorship being done through the games industry um just as primarily as a protest and because of the money that they've lost if they've been deplatformed um so here we go into epic games launcher versus steam now let's assume epic games launcher gets er all the features of um uh, EB, EB games fuck me i'm an idiot there steam has all back to front epic has all the features of steam let's assume they get the review system done everything's okay i think by the time epic has gotten to that stage steam will either start lowering um their cut in games and therefore probably prices and uh, they might not because it's just industry standard prices at the moment but that will basically fuck steam they'll basically fuck epic if steam does that for one particular reason epic buying every game that comes out on pc is going to piss off the pc player base that's just a simple truth the, the whole reason that's a simple truth is that pc gamers want a choice they came, they came to PC so they could have a wider variety. They don't want to have multiple installers on. Steam, if it drops its price or does the same revenue, revenue share or at least similar revenue share as Epic, has a vastly wider variety of games, allows more indie games onto its platform like Crankage Games, who deserves your support. It's like $10, you get like six games. They're pretty damn funny. Shameless plug there. I am not getting paid to plug as games. I just really like them. So I'll take a chance now. Um, but yeah, they have a much wider variety they're pro free speech as long as you are not doing something extremely graphic um and illegal more importantly like pirating a game and reprinting it up there steam based literature game on the platform i, I don't i think it's only like one or two games have been banned so it's extremely helpful in indie games it has all the backlog of games since at least the ps2 era now sometimes you don't get good old games to get those games but steam has that much larger variety of games you can find nearly anything there um so that's a massive benefit over epic even if they equal out steam has that benefit and steam hasn't burnt players the way epic has where epic um metro Exodus is a great example of this everything that's prepared to be launched as a steam game until one week before launch and i mean that because eb games and game and gamestop all had to put epic game stickers on top of the cases they had all been printed as steam games because they didn't expect this to happen. It was so late in development. And they've kept doing this for every game that's come out. Now, I, uh, even Shamu 3 has done this. Now, in Shamu's case, I can understand why they do this. It's that safe bet of money. And it might only piss off a small degree of their fans. Like, 10% of their fans might be pissed off enough to protest and not buy the game. Chances are the bigger revenue share and the bonus they're getting from Epic Games isn't going to hurt their bottom line. They're probably going to benefit from it. So, I think you have the issue of the consistency of doing this of every game and companies like borderlands deciding to do this i was really and i think borderlands much like a few other games I was planning to be released in steam initially they kept doing it for every game that's come out every popular game it's gonna make a shit ton of money epic games buys them out from steam i had originally planned on going on to the epic game store and being a part of that because i thought i want to support developers however then they start buying out the games and i now refuse to use epic game store because i think it's corrupt I don't know, corrupt is the correct term i just don't agree with the business practice of buying out the games so gamers cannot have a choice in what platform they want to use and so i simply refuse to support them and if it, big companies doing it like ball lands i don't especially don't agree with because they're going to make money right they don't need the safety net of something like the epic games um 
I think it was six months they did. They get a payout from that. They don't need that safety net like an indie game like Shamu does or Shenmu. I think I'm probably butchering that name. Um, an indie game, I can understand that epic exclusivity deal because they're not guaranteed sales, especially really early on in development. And it's a safety net for them, so at least even if everything bombs, they can at least start organizing what's going to go off their lives. Um, I understand that necessity there. But I think by the time Epic becomes as equal to Steam, they would have burnt players so much that people simply refuse to use them. There will be people, obviously, who continue using Epic because they want the game initially. But I, I think a lot of gamers, I, w- I won't say majority, I'll say it'll still be a minority, will stick with Steam. Steam's overall a better platform for now. Maybe Epic will surpass Steam, and maybe then we'll see what happens. But as long as Epic keeps buying PC games, they're going to piss off a lot of players and cause major issues. I think pirating is going to become a bigger issue soon as well. Because people who want to play these games early on are just going to pirate it, wait till it comes out on Steam, and then buy it on Steam. I think that's probably what's going to start happening at this rate, because literally every game that's coming out on PC is getting full by Epic Games. Um, I'm hoping Cyberpunk is a put on Epic Games, because I really fucking want to play Cyberpunk. I'm going to be pissed off if they do that. Um, but we'll find out. It's uncertain what's going to happen with Epic. But th- at the moment, they don't have any of the features they should. At bare minimum, they should have had a review feature before they launched. So if players can decide what game they're going to play. Uh, no, stop what game they're going to play. Judge the quality of the game by the player's feedback. Because most of mainstream journalism, especially about gaming, is full of shit. But thankfully... You do have good YouTubers out there that so you get a good judge of what the game is like. But yeah, I think that should have been a bare minimum feature before everything launched. But again, time will tell. I don't think Epic Games at this point is much worse than Steam. In the future, if it becomes equal to Steam, I, I'm still pissed off with them. It was like three years from now, I might support them. But uh, if, I remember, if I remember correctly, their CEO said something. I can't, I can't paraphrase it for you without looking for it, unfortunately. But it came to the effect of basically it doesn't matter what players think we have the games and we have the money. Which means extremely arrogant and pisses me off. That was Davo's talk. <laughs> Davo talks. Um, unfortunately not very coherent. I probably repeated myself a lot. But I hope you at least enjoyed my thoughts on this issue. Um, I really just because Terry Ninja wanted to hear about it. I thought fuck it why not. Um, if you do want to hear my thoughts on other issues Feel free to comment it down or even my Twitter because I use my Twitter quite a lot. Um, Thank you for listening. I know it's been 12 to 13 minutes and you're probably sick of hearing me talk. But uh, have a good one. I'll see you another time.